Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to say that Concord, despite Sony's decision to remove the game from sale and refund to everybody, including me, is not the biggest video game flop of all time. Yeah, yeah. We have some math for you later, but uh, even though Concord might be forgettable, it's unlikely to crash the entire $100 billion games industry. So if you're at Sony or Concord Developers Firewalk Studios, chin up! It's not really that bad. It's a... You made a game that's not great. Yeah, the sun will still come up tomorrow and we still have video games and you can always try again, hopefully. Uh, silver linings, air quotes aside, Concord is, it's done. Sony announced that its PlayStation 5 and PC Hero Shooter will be taken offline on Friday and that players will get full refunds. That's right, Lawrence, I got my email yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh, all $60 has come back to me. Uh, it's a stunning collapse for a game that was released less than two weeks ago. Uh, Concord, though, never got started after it was given a lukewarm response from critics and an even colder shoulder from fans. The game's director, Ryan Ellis, said on the PlayStation blog that, quote, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we'd intended. He added that they will take the game offline and, quote, explore options, including those that will better reach our players. Making the game free would be a good start. That's a good way to reach players. <laughs> but uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the failure of Concord is an unmitigated disaster for Sony, which was counting on Concord to be a money-making live service game <laughs> supposed to last for years. Uh, it, kind of like Overwatch, Fortnite, which have been going for years and years and years, and this was less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead, uh, nobody played it. Analysts told IGN it may have sold as few as 25,000 units. Its all-time peak on Steam was less than 700 players. Now, of course, that doesn't take into account that people could be playing on the PlayStation 2, but this was really bad for PC. Uh, we also asked around a bit and heard the actual sales number could be even lower than the 25,000 to the tune of just 10,000 sales. Uh, that hurts for a game publisher that is more used to sales in the 10 million range. Yeah, by comparison, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, had more than 18 times Concord's player numbers on Steam, and that was also a financial disaster that contributed to a $200 million hit to Warner Brothers Discovery's revenue. Unsurprisingly, that has led to recent reports of layoffs at Rocksteady because of the game's poor performance. So there's no telling what the fallout from Concord might be here, uh, starting with developer Firewalk Studios. But I mean, generally, it's not gonna be good for anybody, I don't think. Yeah, it's unlikely that uh, this kind of thing leads to a lot of a lot of happy outcomes, you know? Uh, again, after asking around, we gotta be a little vague about this. Uh, we learned that Firewalk Studios is actually on paid time off at the moment. They have some weeks of vacation that they've been granted, so the entire studio is, uh, is given some time off after launching the game, which is, you know, probably for the best. Yeah, word is that layoffs haven't been discussed yet. Essentially, the entire studio has been given a vacation while studio heads talk with Sony executives to decide what's next for this game, which could include either dropping the project entirely or reworking it as a free-to-play game. Either way, this is an unprecedented flop for one of the game's industry's largest players, uh, there's no such thing as too big to fail in gaming, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, and say what you will about Cyberpunk, but that game reportedly sold 13 million copies in its first two weeks, so it still captured people's interest and got them to spend money and their time on the game. Uh, like we said, Sony planned for Concord as a big live service game for this year, along with Helldivers 2, and while Sony has previously had its big goals for live service games, it's, it's since stepped back from those earlier predictions of having more than 10 live service games by the end of the 2025 fiscal year. Everything we've done has worked, so why don't we just do this too? <laughs> ah, yeah, the collapse of Concord comes after another Sony studio, Naughty Dog, axed its live service Last of Us project late last year after there were developmental issues. And of course, there's been a bunch of drama around Bungie. Uh, Sony acquired them in 2022, in part for their experience with live service games, but it seems to have yet to pay off. Uh, maybe maybe for Helldivers? I don't know if they consulted with Helldivers, but... Uh. Uh, but how big of this disaster will Concord be for Sony? We don't have public figures for Concord's development costs, but we know that Firewalk had been working on it for eight years, and some estimates range from 100 to 200 million dollars to make the game. Uh, IGN estimated that development of the game could have reached into the hundreds of millions. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it already did. Uh, does that make Concord the biggest flop of all time, though? Let's see if we can put a number on it, or at least a number range on it, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with. Yeah, before we start diving into our clinical clown math, a quick word. We're not doing this in an effort to shame Sony or any of the developers of Firewalk Studios. We're doing it because 
This is video game history happening in front of our eyes. We'd like some context to how historical it might actually be. So let's try not to grave dance a little bit here. That's what everybody was doing yesterday when they announced it. And I was like, all right, you know, well, it sucks, but I'll, whatever. Yeah, I get it. But at the same time, that's not why we're here and that's not what we're doing. Uh, we like to put some some actual industry numbers next to the news so you get a proper idea of how impactful some of this stuff actually is. It's kind of like when Cyberpunk came out, everybody was talking about it like it was the end of the world. But like the the math, the data was there. It was actually a pretty successful project. So that's that's why we're doing what we're doing. All right. Sony acquired Firewalk last year, also for an undisclosed sum. Again, we got to be pretty vague about it. But the number we heard around the water cooler was like $200 million. Interestingly, PlayStation X boss Jim Ryan, who presided over that deal, left Sony later in 2023. Oh, I wonder if there was a little bonus in there for him. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I wonder if he also maybe knew that the pivot to live service wasn't going to work out and he didn't want to be around for all those checks to land on the table. Just, just a conspiracy theory, though. Executives always know first, and they're always the ones to leave. They, I mean, they always are the ones to leave first, too. Uh, all right, so we do know that Firewalk's former owner raised a lot of money in recent years. In September 2021, uh, the company Probably Monsters raised $200 million and announced a publishing partnership with Sony for an upcoming title from Firewalk. And in early 2022, Probably Monsters raised another $250 million to fund additional studios. Yeah, a lot of money getting thrown around. We're just getting a sense for the, the volumes of cash right now. And like we said, 200 million keeps popping up. That was the uh, financial hit that Warner took when Suicide Squad didn't hit. So if we assume that PlayStation acquired Firewalk in April 2023 for $200 million, they would also have to cover payroll costs for the studio since then. Yeah, and now we get into some clown math. This is the fun part. The acquisition announcement stated that Firewalk had 150 employees and growing at the time. Firewalk is located in Bellevue, Washington, which has an average game developer salary of $124,000 a year, according to Zip Recruiter. So, let's assume that Firewalk had an average of 175 employees between its acquisition in April 2023 and now, which is about one and a half years. Payroll costs of around $32 million. So if we add that to also the supposed acquisition costs, that puts Sony's costs at around $232 million. Uh, and that's, that's just flat. I'm sure there's more costs than that. You got to stock the fridge with snacks. You know, you got to you got to keep people swimming in coffee. <laughs> but at this rate, that that value is a total loss, given that they're recalling the games and also issuing refunds. So there's extra cost involved with that, which I was surprised by, by the way, Lawrence. They just gave me the refund. I didn't even ask for it. <laughs> they literally just sent it <laughs> just back shoved to it me in your pocket. They literally just shoved it in my pocket on Steam. It was that was it. But is this Concord the greatest flop of all time? If we're talking about all time flops, we got to mention the granddaddy. <laughs> The one everybody knows, E.T., the extraterrestrial, the for the Atari 2600. It's a it's a legend. Yeah, this is kind of fun, too, because I never tried to dig into the economics of E.T. There's just the folklore, you know? Um, so here we go. Atari spent $23 million on the E.T. license, and this is back in 1982 dollars, uh, and paid a single developer $200,000 to make the game. Imagine paying $200,000 and getting a game versus paying $30 million on top of $200 million. Anyway, uh, in today's dollars, I'll adjust it up, that's more than $73 million. E.T. did sell about 1.5 million copies. That's with all the returns and stuff taken out. Uh, with Atari 2600 cartridge prices being around $30 each, back in the early 80s. Yeah, all right. So the direct math on that equals 45 million in revenue, which seemingly says that ET was actually profitable. <laughs> but Atari didn't get to keep all that money. Uh, there's the cost of manufacturing cartridges, shipping them to retailers, the retailer's margin, all biting out of that money. Yeah, unfortunately, we have no idea what the profit margin might have been on an Atari 2600 cartridge in 1982. I tried, to, I tried to research, but there's not a whole lot out there. I did find this informative graphic breaking down the margins of a Super Nintendo game, probably from the early 90s, but theoretically a lot of those ratios would probably stay roughly the same. Uh, this puts the publisher margin at 33% of the total sales cost, which would mean that Atari only saw a third of that 45 million in revenue, just about 15 million. Uh, that means that they fell short of the 22 million license cost by $7 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so $7 million adjusted for inflation. It's $22.8 million loss in 2024, which is like a tenth of potentially what Concord lost. 
so that's pretty exciting. But that's not the full figure either. That doesn't account for the sunk cost of the millions of game cartridges they manufactured and shipped to retailers that never sold, since Atari drastically overestimated the popularity of the game. Sounds a little familiar. Uh, but ET also helped collapse an entire industry. <laughs> It's, it really did. It's cited as a major contributing factor to the infamous video game market crash of 1983, which decimated the industry in America. Well, how bad was it? <laughs> in 1983, the home video game market's revenue in the U.S. was estimated at $3.2 billion, but had dropped to just $100 million by 1985. That's crazy. So those those losses aren't, aren't all Ataris, but in total money lost, yeah, that already beats Concord, and that's not even adjusted for inflation. Other analyst estimates aren't quite as dire. UK-based market intelligence firm Pelham Smithers, which is a very UK name, shows the total video game industry revenue dropping from 42 billion in 1982 to 37 billion in 83 to 26 billion in 84, and finally 14 billion in 85. So that's a pretty bad drop off, but those are global numbers. Uh, so that's that's tens of billions of dollars. That's a lot year over year. So what is all this clown math? That's why we call it clown math, because we're just sort of extrapolating. What does this tell us? Not really much. It's, it's clown math. So we're doing our best out here with what we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this is just to kind of give us perspective on the severity of what we're witnessing. Uh, but if we really want to draw conclusions, I suppose this is it. Uh, it looks like Concord itself might have lost more money on an individual project basis than E.T. lost for Atari back in the day. But the resulting game crash cost the entire industry tens of billions of dollars over the course of multiple years. We think Concord is very unlikely to do that. Nah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, unlike the 80s, gaming is very, very diverse. Uh, tons of different platforms, products to keep people happy and buying. And for Sony's sake, they have the PlayStation Network, which continues to be a money factory for them. I mean, all sorts of video games. Helldivers is just one of them. Constantly bringing in cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and they get kind of like the the margins on a physical retailer. Every time somebody buys something off the PSN, they get a little slice. Oh, I almost knocked a cup of water off. So every every EA Sports FC card pack or whatever, they get a little chunk of that, and that money is just coming in no matter what. So Concord is not going to stop people from spending money on the PSN entirely. Uh, so they just got a one-time loss, but they have some recurring revenues, and apparently might be launching a PS5 Pro that, if the rumors are true, is going to have a very healthy profit margin baked into the retail costs, so that's going to bring in some money for them. Yeah, meanwhile, Concord's PlayStation trophies just became very super rare. <laughs> it's shutting down in a few days. There are reports of players jumping off cliffs <laughs> in order to grind XP quicker before the game goes offline for good. Uh, physical copies of the game are listing for $100 or more on eBay. The last time you looked, I don't even know how much that uh, controller is now. That's got to be a collector's item, a Concord uh, PlayStation controller. Yeah, and they've got uh, they got an episode in Final Level, that Amazon video game anthology show. Oh, so that's kind of bizarre. Well, I guess we'll see we'll see if that actually ends up happening or if it just gets cut from the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is fascinating stuff. And and again, I, I say that word with a mind that you know some people are going through very hard times right now. Uh, I think it's super easy from the consumer perspective to see something and then be like, you look around and you're like, it's obvious nobody wanted this. Well, it's obvious now. It wasn't obvious five years ago or eight years ago when they decided what game to make or how to make it. You're basically throwing darts in the dark and you hope that one lands in, lands in the middle of the bullseye half a decade down the road. That's not as easy as it sounds. And I think a lot of people do trivialize the prospect of making a game and investing in and getting a hundred plus people to all work on a project together. Uh, so definitely have some sympathy for that. But the market, uh, as a consumer, I'm a little less empathetic towards. I think I think we're all kind of burned out on games as service. I think we're burned out on games that have their marketing and money-making mechanics put first. Uh, a game that's just a platform for sales, as opposed to uh, ostensibly coming from someone's deep passion. Um, maybe at some point somebody had a passionate idea for what Concord was supposed to be, but I don't think that's the game we saw. That's how it comes across to me, Bruce. I don't know. How do you feel about it? That is exactly the way I felt about it. I will continue to trust my own instincts because when I played this two months ago or a month, month and a half ago, whatever it was, I was like, number one, this game does not feel like fun to me. That's just That was just my subjective opinion. But number two, I paid $60 for that pre-order to get into that stupid beta. And there was the $40 version. Obviously, that's the retail version. I was like, they are crazy for charging money for this. There's no way in hell when they've got four or five other video games right next to it that are almost the same for free. 
why would they ever charge for this? Uh, and I was right. <laughs> like, I, I really, like, this was something I, I kind of saw coming from a, uh, a while, while back. And I don't want it to happen. I didn't want this to crash and burn. I, that's not something, like, I was like, ah, it'll find its players and it'll, it'll go. I'm really surprised that Sony shut this all the way down. I, I think that there are two outcomes. And I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times on the internet already, but I'll say it. Uh, free to play. Um, I don't know that we can co count Concord out yet. I think it might come back for you to play uh, in a month or two. Um, or this is this is the scary part. Are they going to start doing what Warner Brothers did with Batgirl? Are they going to get rid of Concord entirely, scrap it, and say tax write off, two hundred million dollars tax write off? Because they totally could. They could say they could they could get all the, get rid of all of this off the internet. And be like, ah, whatever, you know, it's a loss, no big deal. And then that will help Sony's bottom line. That is the scarier option for me. I agree. I I don't think Sony's that kind of company, uh, or PlayStation rather. I mean, there's there are Phantom Games, a PT or whatever, but that that that's all like exterior drama. I think that leads to that sort of thing. Two hundred million, I think, to PlayStation is not like it's bad, but it's not worth throwing something in the grave over because i agree i i think i think their desire to get multiple games of service games off the ground is stronger than their desire to realize 200 million dollar gain in one quarter or one fiscal year yeah i think um they've already invested so much into this uh and they're so dedicated to this strategy that has yet to pay off so either they're, I think it's, if, if they back off Concord, I think it's kind of symbolic of them backing off of games of service entirely because they've, they've had a number of, of thuds. Um, so I think, I think instead what probably happens, Bruce is, yeah, they, they take it back. They spend a year probably trying to add some kind of single player content to it and then relaunch it as a free to play game where it has some, some gameplay mode. That's not just hero shooters. Uh, to get you invested in the world and the characters, and then the hero shooter stuff is still there. And that's where you get deeply engaged and you need a rich online presence with your favorite skin that costs 20 bucks or whatever. I'm not into that, but yeah, it, the the on the shelf comparison is not great. Like you said, um, things like Genshin Impact exist and that's free. Uh, and it's just an, a fire hose of content that's all accessible and ready to play. And meanwhile, you boot up Concord and they hit you with like characters that aren't that p appealing, really. Uh, and uh, and some game mechanics that take a little bit of learning to, to get over. And you can't put that much friction on top of a $40 price tag today. Regardless of the game's merits, independent of all that, comparatively, it just doesn't have a shot. And I think it does speak a bit to maybe Sony's assumption of the power of their own brand that they tried to charge 40 bucks for it. I'm sure that the game plan was get 40 bucks for it, get all the revenue we can for the first nine months or a year, and then we'll bring it to free to play later. And I think they were hoping that the package that they had would still operate on those value perceptions, but boy, does it not. Sorry. So yeah, they got to retool it. Um, they were they were maybe a half decade too late. I can't even see this hitting in 2019 or anything like that, though. It's tough. Yeah. Even next to Overwatch, it kind of already looks a little unappealing. So. Yeah, hopefully there's a path forward. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they they glamorize some of the characters. They add some gameplay modes that hook people, and they can get another another shot. That's what we can hope for. Yeah, and we hope that uh, not everybody is losing their jobs at uh, Firewalk. I, I I hope that that's because I mean that's going to be another thing that all, all the internet's going to be like, oh man, I can't believe they laid off everybody. But then also they're grave dancing on Concord. So uh, we don't want everybody to lose their jobs. We want them to pivot and maybe make a game that's successful and that people will play. That's that's what I would like to see. Most of the developers are probably shopping their resumes around right now. So even if they do decide to go forward, they're probably going to have a, a big staff turnover to deal with. And they're probably going to have a brain drain because of that, which makes it harder to get a project going again. Uh, it almost feels like Bioware Anthem, right? They they tried to make a game according to the uh, what earned money in the market at the time. But by the time it landed, the product wasn't fully baked, didn't seem to have a very profound idea behind it. And a lot of the talent left either before or halfway through the project. So you're just left with this rickety thing no one knows how to work with. Yeah, it's really too bad. Um, hey, you know what, though? You know what's not bad? <laughs> the Inside Games Patreon. <laughs> People are supporting this every single month, uh, unlike Concord. And here are some patrons <laughs> that I'll never forget. 
my favorite character in Concord, Trash Can. Pablo Garcia, Christian Morgan Anderson, Mason Hoover, and Kyle Heaton. Yeah, unlike PlayStation, we, we're not dealing with $200 million budgets to make episodes here. So individual support really does make a difference, and we really appreciate it. Um, speaking of appreciation, I've got some patrons that love Concord so much, they already got a tattoo of Boneface. They actually sent me the pictures <laughs> before we recorded. Oh, Boneface, remember him? Those little pouty eyes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Grave Dancing, sorry. Brian Cosner, Monkey Butlers, Knight, Bort, and Baku Bomb. That's forever, you know? It's not coming off. <laughs> 